Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. We are back for another live extravaganza. And uh, Sarah is now at the chat again where she much prefers to be apparently. <laughs> so we're gonna have a little bit of fun tonight um, doing sunrise dovetails. Now I did a, uh, a practice test ahead of time because it's been a long time since I've done it so I wanted to rewrap my brain around it and kind of got rushed for time and ended up with, uh, with a sunrise dovetail that looked Something like, oh, looked something like this. It looked like uh, this. Let me zoom in. Um, as you can see, Matt Cremona said this isn't a sunrise dovetail. It's not a supernova dovetail. Uh, but that's that's what happens when you you rush it. And I didn't have the chance to uh, to clean up the joint before putting it together. Uh, and I pounded it together, and the whole thing just blew apart on me. Uh, so hopefully we're doing something a little better than that tonight. Um, right, hang on. It's what's that? It didn't jump in viewer. No, it's not working. It's not working? Okay. Um, then message in the chat. I guess we're going to try it for tomorrow night. We'll see if it goes in. Oh, we got eight all of a sudden. Oh. Well, um, can you guys actually see me? Um, so hopefully, apparently YouTube is having all sorts of issues and we're trying to figure out if anyone can actually see this. And if you can, great, let us know. Otherwise, um, we'll probably reschedule for tomorrow night, but hopefully we can actually get into this. Um, but if we can, um, notes Thursday, I'm actually heading down to Texas and I'm gonna be teaching a dovetail class, not sunrise dovetails, <laughs> but a dovetail class in uh, Austin, Texas at Pioneer Farms. And so if you go to pioneerfarms.org, you can sign up for the class there. It'll be this Saturday. And we still have a few slots open for that, I believe. And then on Sunday, it will be the first Midwest Tool Collectors meet in Texas. So we're getting a meet down there, which I'm really looking forward to hanging out with a few people there and, uh, and seeing if anything's coming up with that. So I'll probably be doing a live if I get the signal so we can actually see what's going on there at the first meet in Texas. Um, and then, oh, of course, in May, uh, this will be the next big thing on the calendar, is Makers Central. I'll be going out to uh, UK um, to do that. And so that'll be a fun time. And we'll also be doing a, a giveaway here soon for a couple of the, uh, a couple tickets to Maker Central. So if you are coming to that, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Uh, apparently people can see us. There's, I've got, oh, it's going up a little bit. I don't, do you think if they refreshed, if that would help? I don't know. Uh, well, what's, what's the number out right now? 18. Okay. Well, let's go for it then, because it'll record live and then people can see it. Okay. So it uh, looks like we are going to have a video tonight. Um, so tonight we're going to be making a sunrise dovetail. And so what is a sunrise dovetail? It is basically a dovetail where the pins and the tails are all one thing. Uh, let me do a zoom in on this. And I wanted to have a, a, a better one to show you guys, uh, but I had to rush out the door to get the kids to practice. So I didn't have time to actually put this one together. But if you imagine what it looks like like that, we're going to do something much better than that on the other side. So um, this is uh, this is a complicated joint. This is not an easy joint. But once you wrap your brain around it, it goes together a lot easier. Now the question is, does it actually fall apart? There you go. And it actually goes together at 45. Rather than one sliding into the other like you'd have on a tails and pins, they actually touch tip to tip and then slide into each other. Uh, so we're going to be doing that tonight. And I have a piece of paduke and a piece of white oak, and those will be what we are cutting out. Um, you kind of want two different woods that are different. That way they, they show up and they look a lot better. Um, now, the first thing to do when cutting a sunrise dovetail is the layout. And this is the most important thing and the part that a lot of people like to skip. Uh, but if not done right, this will ruin everything else. So I've got a piece of paper here. And it is very important that it be a Sesame Street piece of paper. Uh, oops. Uh, I was looking for paper ahead of time. And that's what I came up with. Um, so yes, I have the kids' Sesame Street paper on here. Now what we actually want to do is we want to draw out the dovetails ahead of time. So what I like to do is grab the scrap, the, the piece of wood that I'm working with, and I want to actually draw that out on the edge of the paper. And I'm going to draw all the way around it here. And so basically I'm going to be laying out my marks on this piece right now. I want to find the center point. In this case, I'm not going to worry too much about center. Just take a little bit of time here. I'm just going to make a mark. That looks to be about center. And then I want to come off of that either side. Grab this. 
Uh, and I want my, my locations to be about a quarter inch apart. So I'm going to come off an eighth inch on one side. Here, let me zoom in a little bit, guys, so you can see this a little bit better. There. You've been doing Sesame Street voices. Oh, no, that's <laughs> that's Muppets. Muppets. That was Muppets. I'm sorry, isn't it? Yes. So I'm going to come off an eighth inch from either side. And then I'm going to come off a quarter inch and a quarter inch. And that's not going to be enough. We need a little bit more than that. So I'm going to erase those. I'm actually going to come out like uh, a good bit more. Let's come out rather than a, let's come out a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. So let's make those a little bit taller so I can see them. And then that's so that's going to be a half inch apart. Let's see if we can fit in a half inch and half inch. No, we can't fit in half inch and half inch. So let's do. 3 eighths and 3 eighths. There we go. So we'll have a half, 3 eighths, and 3 eighths. And it really doesn't matter what these marks are as long as that they are symmetrical. So you have the same amount this way and the same amount this way. So my center pin will be a half inch apart, and then the rest will be 3 eighths, 3 eighths, 3 eighths, or actually a little bit more on the outside here. The next thing I want to do is I want to pick a point somewhere up here above the board. Um, and it really doesn't matter what that is as long as it is square out from the center point. So somewhere here, I want to pick a point. Now, the, this is the most important thing in the entire step, is picking the point of how far out do you come this way. Um, some people like to come out um, half again, and so another 3 quarter, and they'll put their mark right there. Um, I find that to be a very, very tight, shallow mark. Um, I actually like to move it out twice the distance away. So if it's a 3 quarter inch thick board, I'm going to move it out an inch and a half away. What this does is this is the, the angle of all of the splay. The farther out it is, the easier it is to cut, but the less of an angle you're going to have on there. So now I want to take a straight edge and connect those points. So I got one, and then let's come over here to this one, two. And if you want to see a more concise video on this, actually, uh, Katz Moses Woodworking just had a video recently come out where he actually goes through this whole process. Uh, and I like his method. It's a fairly simple one. He does a few things that I'll, I'll do a little bit differently. Um, but now what we have is we have these three angles. These are the three angles of the cuts that we're going to be making. Now, what you can do is you can get a bevel gauge, and you can set up the bevel gauge to that angle. And then on the next one, you change it to the next angle, and the next one, you change it to the next angle. Uh, but what I like to do, and what several other people do, is you get three bevel gauges, and you can pick these up for almost nothing. Um, so it's good to have a few of them on hand. I think I have like six or so in the shop. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set these up, and I'm going to know this one is the outside. Lock that down. And so now this is locked down. I'm not going to mess with it. I know what that bevel is. And then I'm going to put this one to the second angle. Do it this way so I keep those centric. Set this onto that bevel angle there. Tighten that one down. Make sure it's on there still. Yep. That two. And then my cheap Junko. This one is going to be the middle. And so let's find out what that angle is. That angle is that right there. Let's lock that one down. And there, I have my three angles on here. And that way, I know that all three of these are set up. I don't have to adjust them. I don't have to change them. I know that all my marks are based off of these here. Now we have to put all the marks onto the board itself. So now we have our three angles, which is one of the hardest, which is one of the, the key, most difficult parts, is, is figuring out what those three angles are. And it really doesn't matter what those three angles are. They can be any three angles. You don't even have to set it up on this. It just looks nice if all the angles come to the same point to the same distance away. The next thing we have to do is actually put our baseline on these two pieces of wood. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my marking gauge and I'm going to set it to the thickness of my wood, which is right there, lock it down. And I believe these two pieces of wood are the same thickness. Let me just make sure. And they're slightly off. So I'm going to do one and the other. And so now that I have it on this one, I'm going to make the thickness of that one and go all the way around. This is the baseline cut. So this is the cut that everything comes down to. 
and one of the more important lines. I actually like to make it a really nice deep cut because I like showing off that line afterwards. You never see baseline cuts on uh, power tool cut dovetails. And I'm going to set this for the other one because these two are slightly different thicknesses. It really doesn't matter as long as you keep in mind that you make one mark for one board and the other mark for the other board. So let's go all the way around this board and then we can actually start laying out all of our marks. There we go. Any questions before I go, babe? No, it looks like the video is still kind of going in and out a little bit, so oh. I'm not sure. Well, if this does fall apart, then maybe we'll have to do a second one. And who knows, maybe this, this definitely will end up like that one, and I'm going to have to do another one just to clear my name. Um, I am going to start with the white oak and uh, play with that one first. Let's switch over to this so you guys can see a little closer here. And I'm going to put it into my vise. Now, we need to actually do the layout on this piece and transfer those bevels that we just created onto this board. And so what I want to do is bring over this piece of paper and I'm going to lay out where my center line is. And then I can put in the marks where these three lines are. One, two, three. One, move you over a little bit. And yes, I'm using pencil right now because the first time the knife touches it, that's where it's going to be. So let's start with this. Bevel gauge number one is going to be on here. And so I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to put my knife on that mark and do one line down. Oop. Making sure everything is right. No, that's not right. Wait a second, wait a second. Before I go on this, let me make sure I'm thinking through this correctly. Let me make sure I'm thinking through this correctly. Yes, that is right. <laughs> It's one of those sudden realization moments of, oops, uh, I think I did something wrong here. And then I'm going to take this bevel gauge, I'm going to put it right up here on the top, put my knife back in that same mark, and then run the opposite direction across the top. And then we're going to flip this bevel gauge over, we're going to do the exact same thing, but over here on the other side. And I'm going to try not to block your view. Put my mark in there, which makes it kind of awkward to hold. Mark across the top, and then mark down the face. Put the knife into that mark, and come on down. How's it coming on your end, babe? Um, I don't, I think people might still be, we have a few people, but I don't know. Okay. I know some of our high friends are saying that they can. Oh, and one of the new things, if someone is a member, they'll see my logo beside their name. You may have seen that in a couple of people. I think Don is in the chat. He was earlier. Yeah. Um, and so those are members. And members have access to uh, emojis, special emojis that you can use that no one else can. So don't you feel special. So I'm using the second mark, the second bevel gauge. I'm hoping my arm is not in the way. It probably is. It normally is. Ah, it slid. And this first side, just like with tails and pins on dovetails, whichever one you do first really doesn't make much difference because if it's off slightly, then you can just transfer those lines to the tails or pins, whichever you're doing second. And so you know, if you're a little bit off, oh well, as long as you stay consistent off, if that makes any sense. So there's those two. Now let's do the number three lines. Yeah, I like how these ones are looking. I like them to not be too um, steep. A little bit more shallow is 
I don't know, I like my regular dovetails to be good and steep, and I like these ones to be a little less um, overstated. If that makes any sense. Okay, so now we've marked out this side. Now I need to mark off the back side of the board. And so usually I just wait, rotate the whole thing around, and it's just easier to work on my side. And on this side, we want to make sure the lines go back in. So all these lines are going to come in towards a point here rather than coming out to the outside. So they all need to go in towards the middle. So we can put this on here, put our knife in there, draw that line down. And hopefully all these points don't come too close together. Put the knife in the mark. And I'm taking my time on this because I don't want to rush this. I want it to end up with a decent quality project. Now let's put the knife into this mark. Come, oop, no, 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 we don't want to do that. I'm going to go on to number twos because <laughs> the bevel changes on the next line. Put it into the mark, cut down, turn it around. Put the knife into the mark, cut down, and then on to number three. You should kind of see a pattern by now. It's just three angles parallel to each other, and you can make any amount of angles you want here. Um, I've seen sunrise dovetails with seven or eight angles or reversing angles so that half of one runway and half run the other way. There are all sorts of crazy things you can do with these. Um, I find three to just be a general decent quality. Now I want to look here on the top and I want to get rid of this section and we're going to go every other. So that section, that section, that section, and that section. Those are what we want to cut out. So I want to stay on that side of the line. We do it over here. Oop, not that one. That one. That one. And some people like to put in a knife wall. Uh, it makes things a little bit easier for a saw to track on. I'm not as much of a fan of putting in knife walls. Uh, but if you do, you can just come in and pair in towards that knife mark you just made. It doesn't take too much more time. I'll do it on one and show you what that looks like. It allows that knife to track in a little bit easier. It allows the saw to start its track in a little easier. Um, some people like it, some people don't. Uh, I generally don't. Uh, so, now we need to cut this. And this is what really blows people's mind is we're not cutting straight down. And we're not cutting straight across. We're going to be cutting at an angle this way. And we're also cutting at an angle this way. And it really confuses people. One of the things you can do is actually move this until this line is up and down. And now you're only working with one of the two compound angles. So now I can start here on this corner and I can just nick in and I can eyeball down the blade. Let me see if you guys can see a little bit better with this one. Is I can eyeball down the blade and see exactly how I'm cutting, keeping the line. across the top, I'll track down my side, make sure I'm on track there. And I'm down to depth on this side, a little ways off the line, not bad. Down to depth on that side, and there's one line. You open it up. Move it just a little bit to the second one. And now we can start that line. So I'll pick the spot. Come across. Once you start that top curve, and you just draw the line on down the board. I like to look at my side of the line until I'm all the way down on my side. And then I can come back over here and follow it down with the line on the other side. And on that one, there's a slight issue between the two. There we go. There we go. And we just 
keep on keeping on, making sure you're cutting on the correct side of the line. These middle ones are easier because they're a lot closer to a plum cut. At least they feel easier, they're still just a little off. Down on my side, making sure the line's good on the back side too. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the saw, just trying to wait. How's the line, babe? We got one question. What's that? Um, would it give a more even point if you marked equal spaces along the baseline and drawing the radial lines out to the out to the outer edge, assuming the boards are the same thickness? Uh I don't know what he's meaning. Uh, read that again while I think about it. All right. Would it give a more even joint if you marked equal spaces along the baseline uh -huh. and drawing the radial li radial lines out to the outer edge? Um, that would put all the angles too tight together, and you'd never be able to get a, a chisel in to cut out the very last bit. Um, if that, that creates, like I drew this picture here so that I can move that point where all these lines come together farther away from the board. If that point is too close to the edge of the board, um, then all of the angles become so acute that you can't get anything into them and the pieces become so weak that they break off. Uh, I think that answers your question, but probably not, sorry. <laughs> if not, let me know. Down the baseline, nice in the back. cuts to go. so you can follow both lines. Uh, but after doing it a few times, this really isn't that much of a difference. Okay, so can I ask you a technical question about What's that? YouTube? Not about that for a second. So people are saying it keeps popping up and they're clicking on the live, but then it gets fuzzy screen. Do you have any hints that I... Yeah, it's YouTube right now is having all sorts okay. of issues. At the moment, YouTube is, yeah, having problems. Okay. Sorry. Um, if you're having problems with it, it will be recorded so you can watch it later. But uh, yeah, YouTube is YouTube. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to that. Okay. Last cut here. Let me get on the front part. looking a lot like other dovetails. Make sure this is in view. Ooh, there we go. Is that I mean to hold fast? Lock this down. And then we can start coming in here. The problem is sometimes these pins get so tight you need a really thin chisel. That's why I'm actually going to bring out one of my Narex chisels. I do have a few of them. Um, but this is the only eighth inch chisel I have. All my other ones are too big. And so I'm going to start here a little ways away from the line. Some people like to come in with a coping saw. I don't like coping. I've never been good with coping. So that was a joke. I got it. Okay, good. I just chop in and then pair out and then chop in and pair out. And I just 
just have to make sure I do my angle because this whole thing skews over. Oh, fart. I cut on the wrong, right side of the line, but I'm chopping out the wrong piece. <laughs> ah, well, we're going to work with it. Oh, well. <laughs> so this one stops being the pins and is now the, uh, the tails board. Oh, well. Such is life. I'll have a, that'll create a couple gaps, but that's what happens when you haven't made one of these in a long time. I don't remember when the last time I was actually made. I made them for a box. I don't even remember what the box was for. Was it a gift for you? I don't remember. Probably was a gift for you. Now I'm pair out down to the parking gauge line. And so the trick is you just do every other one. So we can repeat it on this one. Actually, on this one, I can probably use my three eight my three or uh, eight millimeter chisel because all these chisels come in metric rather than standard. The chat just that quiet. Yep. But I think that's because many of our chatty friends are having problems getting on. Yeah. Yeah, apparently right now it's almost impossible to actually watch a YouTube video, a regular one. Because it's just not working right. So I'm going to chop in halfway from this side, flip it over, and clean it out to the other side. Right on down to that baseline. Is that one back to my eighth inch chisel and it's really nice I'd love to have a sixteenth inch chisel um, I don't own a sixteenth inch chisel but uh, one of these days I'll probably purchase one just don't tell my wife oh wait <laughs> that would stop you but I need it babe ooh ooh I broke that out oh I used to broke out my hands these ones on the outside, you end up cutting across the grain, and so they end up breaking out rather regularly. Oh well, not a problem. Now let's see where we at. Let's go back to this one. And finish this one out down to the baseline. I think, due to having problems and it being so quiet on there, I'm going to wrap up chopping on this side, and we'll do the other half of it next week. You think that sounds good, babe? I think so. I am. Is anyone on there? Uh, not actively replying. I, I've got your hive mind up, so I was going to text huh. them. Cool. Yeah, if any of you don't know, I have a, uh, a Wood by Right Hive Mind on Facebook where I ask a lot of questions about what do you guys think I should do, this or that, and it's often the place where I have the most updates of, hey, I'm going to be doing this, if anyone wants to join in. So if you want to join that, you can search for Wood by Right Hive Mind on Facebook and uh, ask to join. If I think you're worthy, then I'll okay. I, I let most anyone in there unless they are obnoxious. Don't like obnoxious people. There's enough of me around. So, what, were you gonna say something, babe? I was just agreeing with you. <laughs> so this is a lot more of the same. Punch in, chop out, punch in, chop out, Ooh, peer out. That's how you get all the way down through. And then I'm going to show you a little trick of cleaning up before we probably call it a night on this half. And this stringy oak 
it's not an easy one because anytime you start going cross grain, you start getting all these little strings that cause you issues. And I actually like to come in with a file and clean them out. And I think that was one of the things that Katz Moses talked about too in his video. So apparently I'm not the only one who likes to clean with a file. I know that some people even come in with like sandpaper on the edge of a ruler and clean them out with that. I think that's a little overkill for me personally, but everyone's different. So now I'm going to try and match that angle and clean it out all the way down. There. Now let's open it up. A little peek what we got. Now here is the issue. Let me zoom in a little ways. Is that you can see inside it's kind of dirty here. I'm going to come in and clean these all out. And then I'm going to use a file to clean off and smooth these faces before I go any farther and transfer the lines. Now initially I cut the lines wanting to keep the pieces that I just took out. So these are going to be a little gnarly. There's going to be a few gaps for them because I was trying to stay towards that side of the line. Which also means that on the back here, these pins are going to be incredibly thin and almost impossible for me to clean out on the other side. So that's going to be really tricky. Uh, we will see how that goes. So let's start cleaning this all out. Now that's what happens when you go too oh, fast. Yeah, refocus it. Oh, thank you. What, you don't like that blur blur? No, not really. I can take my glasses off. Oops, I didn't cut to this baseline. And if anything, this isn't a terribly strong joint. Um, so if you're looking for something that is really, really sturdy, this isn't the joint I generally suggest. But that being said, because it's more of a show joint, if you do have any slight imperfections or problems, feel free to undercut them because you're never going to um, you're never going to see the inside of this, and so it's not a a showy inside joint. So I'm just going to clean these little bits out. And I got this really nice dovetail chisel, but even that is doesn't fit. So I'm going to get a smaller dovetail chisel here or something. Let's clean that up. Now let me grab my file and clean out the rest of it. So let's clean this off with a file. And grab this one. Really nice knife edge file in here. What this allows me to do is come in here and smooth out these faces. And normally I would take them back to the marking gauge line. But in this case, because I cut on the wrong side of the line, or because I cleaned on the wrong side of the line, I can't see the marking gauge line. But that's not a huge problem because I'm going to be able to take the reality of this and transfer it and use those marks on the next piece. And this will allow me to clean up all these inside surfaces, make sure they're nice, crisp, and ready to go. So I think we're ready for the next side. Um, but because everything's going so slowly, I think we're actually going to hold off until next week. And I'll show you how to transfer the marks from this board to this board. Next week we're not meeting tomorrow? No, next week. No, next week. Next week. What were you putting in tomorrow? I was putting in tomorrow. But... Yeah, I'm not going to have time tomorrow because i got to pack to get to Texas. Right. Um, yeah, so i got to... We're still waiting to find out if we get enough people going to the dovetail class on Saturday. Um, then I'm going to be taking my bench with me, but that means I have to pack my bench out, put it in the minivan, and drive down to the minivan. If I don't take the minivan, if I don't take the bench, then I can take a smaller car. Um, so a lot of people, when they want to do it, rather than transferring the marks from this to this board, they just use the exact same layout marks that they had to start new ones. But if you've ever had any problems with this board, then you might have a problem with transferring that back over because reality is always different from plans. So next week, I'll show you how to transfer the marks from this board to this board and make them go right into each other. So that should be a little bit of fun. Um, 
but I think that's about it. So yeah, I think we'll be getting back to this next Tuesday and hopefully YouTube is actually working. And we so, should be able to do it at the regular time. Yes, uh, that's right. You're not working next Tuesday. So we should be able to do it at 7 o'clock Tuesday. And I'm looking forward to seeing it at 7 o'clock Central Time. So I think that about does it. And until next time, have a wonderful day.